So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, do you have to believe in God to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ? Yes, of course you do. Why? Because one of the greatest commandments that Jesus gave <coughs> is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. How can you love God if you don't believe in him? So the answer is obviously yes. Any other questions about any aspect of the Christian faith, history, values, teachings, doctrines, whatever you want to ask? I have a question. What is exactly the Holy Spirit? So ladies and gentlemen, the question is what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is a divine person of the Trinity, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father, from whom he derives all that he is. He speaks to the church, he guides the church, he is our advocate, he is our intercessor, he is the one who is the giver of gifts, he is the one who is the producer of fruits in the life of the church and he is the very source of the life of the kingdom of God on earth. And that is who the Holy Spirit is to the church. Any other questions on any aspect of the Christian faith? Our doctrines, our values, our history, our beliefs. What's your question, bro? My question. <laughs> um... What's the answer to a consistent Christian life? Meaning that, you know, not to be distracted too much, but what advice would you give as a Christian brother in the Lord? How to be consistent in this modern day? Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing that a Christian can do consistently is repent. Because in everything else you're going to sin. So the only consistent thing about the Christian life that a Christian can do consistently is live the life of repentance. It is repentance that drives forward Christian spirituality. It is repentance that drives forward Christian practice. It is repentance that drives forward the Kingdom of God. It is repentance that drives forward spiritual maturity. Repentance is the fuel of the Christian life. When you run out of repentance, you run out of spiritual discipline. When you run out of repentance, you run out of commitment to the Kingdom of God. When you run out of repentance, you run out of the fruits of the Spirit. When you run out of repentance, you run out of the gifts of the Spirit. When you run out of repentance, you run out of the transformation work of the Spirit. And so it is repentance that it is the heart of the Christian life. Because without repentance, nothing else of the Christian life is possible. Next question about any aspect of the Christian faith, teachings, values, history, ethics, whatever you like. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 shows that God was not alone at the beginning. For it says that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. That Ruach, that Spirit of God, was there with God at the beginning. And so we see in the very first verse of Genesis, the first foreshadowing of what Christians call the Trinity. The Trinity is not an invention of later Christians. The Trinity is there in the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen. Any other questions about any aspect of the Christian faith? He makes YouTubes and he's Go on, ladies and gentlemen. Don't feed the troll. Go on, ladies and gentlemen. Go on. Sorry, I can't hear you over him. 
The Sabbath. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Sabbath is on a Saturday. But the Sabbath was not given to Gentiles. It was given to Jews. However, ladies and gentlemen, the historical church, ladies and gentlemen, the historical church established a tradition very early to honor the Sunday like a Sabbath. And it has the right to do that because Paul says that whatever day you honor, honor it unto the Lord. And so, if the Gentile church chooses to honor the Sunday like a Sabbath, they are doing what Paul and the apostolic teaching gives them licit license to do. And so this whole debate about Saturday, Sunday, Sabbath is a bit of an ignorant debate. In the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul makes clear that you can honour any day unto the Lord. And there is nowhere in the Old Testament where it says the Sabbath was given to the world. The day of rest, ladies and gentlemen, that God honours on the seventh day of creation is not given to the world. It's a statement about what he does. The Sabbath is given to the Jews at the commandments and it is not given to Gentiles. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? On any aspect of the Christian faith? Any other questions on any aspect of the Christian faith going once? One president and all the other what it must be finished and be one rule for everyone. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. One religion, one planet Earth, one president, and finish this old wars going on, killing children, women, all pastors, and all the these hundreds and hundreds of prime ministers and president. They're using money in the natural resources. Okay, I get your point. Country. Okay, and sir, let me. These people must be. Sir. It should be a one religion and one, one planet Earth and one pastor. Okay. And one rule for everyone. Thank you. Black, white, yellow, whatsoever. Great stuff. What do you talk about that? So, ladies and gentlemen, I absolutely agree with the biblical principle that everyone should be treated the same under the law. That was established in the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, that the Jewish nation should treat everybody under the law, equally under the law, equal treatment under the law. That is a Christian concept. That is not an Islamic concept. Under Sharia law, I as a Christian would be treated as a second class citizen, ladies and gentlemen. That's what would happen, ladies and gentlemen. And under liberal progressive laws, working class communities are not being treated equally under the law. We as Christians are committed not to a multi-religious society, but to a mono-religious society. We want the world to be Christian. We are not ashamed of that aspiration. We will not back down from that aspiration. But, ladies and gentlemen, we don't believe in forced baptisms. We do believe in Christian governments. And so we are quite happy, ladies and gentlemen, for different nations to have Christian governments and to base their laws on Christian teaching. However, 
The Christian worldview does not support the idea of a one-world government because there are localized differences. And so as Christians, we believe that those that are making the laws and the laws that they pass should be as close to the ones that those laws affect, ladies and gentlemen. We don't believe, therefore, in a far distant caliph who passes a law that rides roughshod over local differences. Christian politics works out different from Islamic politics. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry, sir, do you want to debate? Would you like to debate? Then let someone else ask a question. Let someone else ask a question and then I'll come back to you. Right, we're going to debate this guy. What, what do you want to debate about? When you give me an answer, I'm saying if you have a one election all over the planet, elect one person Thank to you. rule this planet Earth. Under one rule, same for every color, same for every religion, you are pushing Christians' uh, uh, government. I'm not talking about Christian government. I'm talking about the one election around the globe, right? There's a different candidate can be stand, and the winner will rule this planet Earth under one rule and same rule for everyone. Okay, do ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take questions from anybody who wants to ask a question. This is just not a debate that I want to get involved in. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Lose your... Speak now or forever lose your chance. Shout it to those over there. What does it say? So what's your question, bro? Right, ladies and gentlemen. Who is the owner of these bloody billions of pounds property down there? Yeah? Because you have so many In Luke 19, 27. Just for a very few people. Elite people who can have nuclear power. In Luke 19, 27, our Lord said these words, but these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. That passage of scripture, ladies and gentlemen, starts, starts in verse 11, where it says, while they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. And so he said, ladies and gentlemen, so those of you over here that want to listen to me, stand over here. I'm going to project my voice that way, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, this passage is often used by the critics of Christianity because the, Christi the critics of Christianity want to try and portray Jesus as a teacher of violence. It's often used by Muslims because they want to portray Jesus as teaching jihad to justify that their prophet taught jihad, ladies and gentlemen. However, the, the teaching is at the back end of a parable. It's talking about the judgment. It is about judgment day. And it is talking about the spiritual death that comes when Christ casts into hell those that refuse to acknowledge him as king. It is not a call for this world violence or for this world war. And those that try to use that scripture in that way are showing their ignorance of scripture. And those Christians that haven't even bothered just to read the text in its context are showing 
their laziness in not just thinking it out from by reading it in its context. And this, ladies and gentlemen, shows again why as Christians we should have apologetics taught in all our churches. Next question on any aspect to the Christian faith, values, beliefs, ethics. I think you had one. Why, why are your churches turning into mosques? Any other questions? I'm not going to answer this troll anymore. Why, why, why are they uh, coming into the mosque? Nobody goes going to the church. once. Why the people are not going to the church? Go on, sir. Has the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit ever in history communicated with a person who was not a prophet? So, ladies and gentlemen, has the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit ever communicated with anyone who is not a prophet? Yes, of course they have. The Holy Spirit is the very reason why anyone is a Christian at all. And that is a form of communication. Jesus spoke to people who weren't prophets all the time. And the scriptures which are inspired by the Holy Spirit are given liberally by Christians to all peoples. So yes, they have communicated to non-prophets. Any other questions or comments, ladies and gentlemen? On any aspect of the Christian faith, our beliefs, our values, our teachings, any questions that you would like to ask at all? Going uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you read um, the, uh, about 1,500 pages uh, issued by Anders Breivik, who's now in prison? He describes the whole, the whole history um, of Islamic um, uh, attacks in the West uh, right through the ages. And um, what's the question? Uh, I'm trying to think, sorry, I'm trying Come to... back when you've got a question. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Going once. On any aspect of the Christian faith, our teachings, our values, our ethics, our history, this is your chance to ask a question to a Christian. Going once. I'm taking questions, bro. Yeah, I remember I'll just tell you. Tell me afterwards. What's the, and I'm looking for, what, what's the question? Just, just remember, yeah. Have you, actually, have, you, have you read through that? that, uh, that uh, so the question is, have I um, read, read Anders Breivik's uh, manifesto? Parts of it, not all of it. And why would I? The guy was an absolute monster. And he's talking rambling nonsense for the most part. Next question. So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, where is Jesus as the divine Logos, as the second person of the Holy Trinity, mentioned in the, in the Old Testament? It's in Genesis. He's meant the, the word Mamre, the word in the Old Testament, appears to the patriarchs as a person and speaks to them as a person and is described as God and describes himself as God and acts like God. And thus we see that the Trinity is in the Old Testament. It isn't something that Christians invented in the New Testament. It's there in the Old Testament. The Word is the Son. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh, or the Lord God, is the Father. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Go on, bro. Uh, Sorry? LGBT. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians cannot support LGBT plus politics in our churches. Those churches that do have gone into a serious error. 
that have compromised basic, fundamental and foundational Christian teachings about the nature of the family, the place of sex and sexuality, and the ordering of society, the ordering of life, and the purpose of the body itself. And so as Christians, and as a Christian, I denounce every fellowship that supports LGBTQ plus politics and waves pride flags and celebrates pride. You have erred from the faith and I appeal to you to study the faith truly and repent of your errors and your sin. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Go on. No, go on. If you want a Bible that has the commentary of the early church fathers, it's on a website called Katana. It's the katana.com Bible, and you will find lots of early church fathers giving their commentaries on, ladies and gentlemen, the verses of the Bible. Yeah, I guess you want to ask a question. <laughs> I wasn't going to, but if you insist. Yeah, go on, ask, insist. Um, and I, and how do you now feel? about Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson is a working class hero that has been villainized by the alt left. He hasn't called for violence. He hasn't instigated violence. When champagne, have you, have you been, let me finish. I'll debate videos? you if you want. Would you like to debate? Would you like to debate? Would you like to debate? Yeah, well, I'll come to, I'm going to debate you today about what's happened in Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, Heiko Ku was silent when the Muslim grooming gangs were raping the children from working class communities. Heiko Ku was silent when mass migration was poured onto working class communities, forcing working class communities to campaign for hospital appointments, GP appointments, dental appointments, social housing. Heiko Ku and champagne socialists like him have been completely silent about the plight of working class people from the armed forces who are now homeless and on the beds of their families because they can't find housing whilst illegal immigrants are shoved to the top of the queue and housed in hotels, ladies and gentlemen. And yet Heiko Ku would want to villainize Tommy Robinson for speaking about those things that he himself and those of his ilk and those of his ilk and those of his ilk, ladies and gentlemen, who would like to villainize Tommy Robinson. If you would like to present the evidence of Tommy Robinson's calling for violence, I will condemn Tommy Robinson on camera. That was underhand the way you argued there, right? I, I understand why. The other, the, the Muslim guy did the same thing a minute ago, right? An underhand response to a legitimate question, right? Now, you asked me would I debate, I'm happy to debate, I told you, I'm, a, I'm doing a video at the moment, but I'll come back and debate you, I don't have any problem with that, but you turned it into an attack on me, for no reason. Did you not stand, why did you do that? I'll tell you why, here's why. Why? Okay, sorry, Bob, can we have a recap? Just of that. Okay, recap, what is it? I'm sorry, why, bro, you'll have to move in. Why did he turn my simple and legitimate question into a personal attack on me? Here's why. Here's why. Heiko Ku at the last general election stood for which party? The Workers' Party. Who leads the Workers' Party? George Galloway. Has George Galloway? Has George Galloway? George Galloway. If, if Tommy Robinson incited violence, then George Galloway also incited violence. Because George Galloway. You attacked me. Celebrated, aggravated for protests against 
uh, Israel that led to anti-Semitic actions in this country on our streets, ladies and gentlemen. So we can't take we can't take criticism from the likes of people who support George Galloway. Right. Here's an anti here, right, here's an anti-Semitic act. Here's an anti-Semitic act, ladies and gentlemen. He wants to ask what was an anti-Semitic act. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going I'm going to give you I'm, I'm going to give you a string of them. Literally, I'm going to give you a string of them. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, who remembers when Muslims projected onto the Houses of Parliament about freeing Palestine from the river to the sea? The call for freeing Palestine from the river to the sea is calling for the destruction of the State of Israel. So what? How many so what? That would lead to the, that, the, he agrees with it, that would lead to the genocide of the Israeli citizens, ladies and gentlemen. Furthermore, furthermore, did the police arrest the people that do that? No. But, but ladies and gentlemen, have they arrested people for tweeting under the incitement laws, working class people, have they arrested them for tweeting because supposedly they incited riots? If you call, ladies and gentlemen, put your hand up. If you saw on YouTube Muslim mobs attack people who disagreed with their protests about Palestine. Put your hand up. There you go. There you go. And how many, there you go, and that was supported, that was supported, you can look it up on YouTube. In London, in London, are you denying it? Are you denying it? You type me, you're putting your hands up, tell us about them. Yes. Where did they take place? Go and look up. Every weekend. There you go. There you go. Lying. Because he didn't see it. It's not true. He didn't see it. So it's not true. It's like Tim Farron saying, because my church isn't having its windows put through, ladies and gentlemen, churches aren't being attacked in England. All right, I'll come and debate with you. Okay. Yeah, no I'm whenever you're ready. Oh, I'll come back whenever you're, you're ready. You've insisted on doing it this way. Whenever you're ready, Haiku. Raising, I'll come and debate with you. He's lying. He's lying about everything. I'll state it again. I'll state it again on camera, ladies and gentlemen. If anyone can show me where, where Tommy Robinson incites violence, I will come back to this park and I will condemn him on camera and I will call for his arrest and his imprisonment. If you can show me where he calls for violence, I will condemn him and call for his arrest. That's a simple challenge. If you can't do it, stop lying about him. Like you're lying about Douglas Murray. Like you're lying about Nigel Farage. The fact of the matter is, Tommy Robinson has spoken up for communities that the champagne socialists like Haiku would rather ignore, ladies and gentlemen. And Tommy Robinson is supported by people from all ethnicities, not just white folk, but black people, Asian people, Jewish people, Chinese people, I know they're Asian, but we use our terms differently here in the UK. So, Oriental people, sorry. So the reality is, if you are going to accuse him of something, demonstrate he called for violence. Because until you demonstrate he called for violence, I won't condemn him. Now, any other questions about any aspect of the Christian faith, ladies and gentlemen? Do you support him? Yes. 
in every way that Tommy Robinson's agenda coincides with the kingdom of God. That's the rules of this debate. Right. <laughs> right. You got this live streamed on 20 channels, haven't you? Yeah, you have. You can, Haiku, you can download it from one of our channels if you want it from for one of yours. Right, just to show that whilst I do oppose Haiku, I love him because he is made in the image of God. Right? I got no hatred for the man. I suggest what we do is we each talk until we're done. We just go backwards and forwards until we want to stop. All right, how many minutes do you want to do?